Blackbeard, whose real name remained shrouded in mystery, was a notorious English pirate whose brief yet fearsome career spanned only 15 months. Born in Bristol, England, he adopted the name Edward Teach, or possibly Thatch Drummond, to obscure his past. With a striking appearance, long black beard adorned with ribbons, fuses lit under his hat, and armed to the teeth, Blackbeard aimed to instill terror in his victims. His infamous reputation was largely shaped by Charles Johnson Slaniel Defoe's exaggerated and mostly fictional accounts, making Blackbeard a standout figure in the golden age of piracy. Described as merciless and amoral, he met his end in a dramatic encounter with the Royal Navy, enduring multiple pistol shots and sword cuts. In the early 1700s, Blackbeard joined forces with the British pirate Benjamin Hornigold in the Bahamas, raiding ships in the Caribbean and along North America's coast. Notably, he captured the Concord in 1717, renaming it the Queen Anne's Revenge. Fitted with 40 cannons, this former slave ship became a formidable pirate vessel. By 1718, Blackbeard commanded a crew of 300 to 400 men, known for their strict discipline. Teach's Jolly Roger flag featured a skeleton, holding an hourglass and a spear pointing at a bleeding heart, signaling imminent doom to those who resisted. Despite a pardon from the governor of North Carolina, Charles Eden, Blackbeard continued his piracy, capturing the revenge of fellow pirate Steed Bonnet. With a fleet of four ships, including the sloop Adventure commanded by Israel Hands, Blackbeard expanded his ambitions, terrorizing merchant vessels along the American coast. The lure of easy plunder and poorly armed ships fueled his relentless pursuit of larger prizes. In May 1718, Blackbeard, now infamous, successfully blockaded Charleston, attacking numerous ships and releasing prisoners upon receiving a ransom that included medicine, possibly for his crew's ailments. While sailing to North Carolina, he deliberately ran the Queen Anne's Revenge and another ship aground, perhaps to reduce his large crew. The stranded Queen Anne's Revenge eventually sank, and the wreck discovered in 1996 likely belonged to Blackbeard's vessel, holding artifacts linking it to the notorious pirate. Reaching Bath Town, North Carolina, Blackbeard received another pardon from Governor Eden, sold his captured cargo, and even married a plantation owner's 16-year-old daughter. Yet, a warrant from Philadelphia exposed his past, prompting him to return to piracy, capturing French ships off Bermuda and returning to Bath Town with valuable cargo. Governor Alexander Spotswood of Virginia, determined to suppress piracy, dispatched two naval sloops in November 1718, offering a reward for Blackbeard's capture. With a reduced crew, Blackbeard faced Lieutenant Robert Maynard's forces. The battle unfolded near Ocracoke Inlet on November 22, 1718. Despite Maynard's ships running aground, Blackbeard's sloop fired a devastating broadside. In a fierce encounter, Blackbeard fought Maynard toe-to-toe, -to -toe, sustaining multiple wounds. Only after five pistol shots, twenty sword cuts, and a decapitating blow did the infamous pirate fall. Legend has it that Blackbeard's headless corpse circled the sloop thrice. Maynard affixed Blackbeard's head to his ship's prow as a warning. Blackbeard's surviving men faced trials and hangings, except for one acquitted and Israel Hands, who received a royal pardon for testifying against corrupt North Carolina officials. Despite Blackbeard's short and comparatively modest piracy career, his legacy grew posthumously. He became the archetypal terror of the high seas, his legend enduring far beyond his deeds in life. After Blackbeard's death, his legend grew thanks to Daniel Defoe's general history of the robberies and murders of the most notorious pirates, published in the 1720s. While credited to Captain Charles Johnson, it's believed that Defoe, a skilled journalist and author, might have penned the work, blending fact and fiction to captivate readers. Defoe's vivid portrayal of Blackbeard described him as a monstrous figure with a long black beard, twisted with ribbons, covering his face like a frightful meteor. Blackbeard's image was further enhanced by his habit of tying slow-burning matches under his hat, creating an intimidating appearance during battles. Contrary to evidence, Defoe painted Blackbeard as a sadistic captain, tormenting his crew for his own amusement. He described episodes where Blackbeard locked himself and crew members in the hold, suffocating them with burning brimstone for entertainment. In another cruel game, he marooned 15 crewmen on a rock, hoping they would turn on each other for a greater share of the treasure. However, they survived, disappointing Blackbeard. In yet another disturbing incident, Blackbeard shot his second-in-command, Israel Hands, under the cabin table after blowing out the candle. 
When asked about his actions, he claimed that killing crew members occasionally reminded them of his authority. Defoe's account also portrayed Blackbeard as having a prodigious sexual appetite and multiple wives, whom he allegedly prostituted to his crew. However, historical records suggest a more modest personal life, with one governor noting Blackbeard having a wife and children in London. Despite the disparities between fact and fiction, Defoe's portrayal of Blackbeard persisted in later works, influencing fictional depictions in works like Robert Louis Stevenson's Master of Ballantrae and a popular London musical play in the late 19th century. By the 20th century, Blackbeard became a figure of comedy in films like Disney's Blackbeard's Ghost, 1968, showcasing the transformation of a fearsome pirate into a character of amusement.